this time last year, we gathered together in our annual act of remembrance around this war memorial outside Teddington Memorial Hospital, as the people of Teddington have done for almost a hundred years. Unhappily, this year, due to the global pandemic and the current lockdown, we are unable to gather together in person, except for a few of us involved in making this recording. This is, of course, a great sadness, but it does perhaps give us the opportunity to relate more closely to the people of this town who lived through the trauma of two world wars. This year, our normal lives, like theirs, have been radically curtailed. And although we haven't been living in fear of bombs, we, like them, have been drawn together as a community against a common foe. And this year, more than ever, we appreciate the gift of our forebears in bequeathing to us the Teddington Memorial Hospital, itself a living memorial to the men of this town who died in the First World War, which has fully played its part in the battle against the virus, providing a dedicated COVID ward since the beginning of the pandemic. Like the rest of the NHS, it has risen magnificently to the occasion and we're proud to stand in front of it today. For the last two years, our remembrance has focused on the Great War of 1914 to 18, as we marked the 100th anniversary of this conflict. In 2020, we had plans to celebrate the end of the Second World War the 75th anniversary of VE Day in May and of VG Day, VJ Day in August. These events had to be cancelled. So it is appropriate that today we hold in the forefront of our minds the men and women of Teddington who fought and died in World War II, both those on active service and those on the home front, among them, tragically, several children. Men from Teddington were represented in all branches of the military, serving in theatres of war across the globe. Corporal Frank Bushnell, Middlesex Regiment of 170B, 78B High Street, Teddington, died in Normandy on the 28th of June 1944, aged 18 years. Sergeant Cliff Kenneth Clifton of Nine Somerset Gardens had been an insurance, insurance broker's clerk before the war, but like many other Teddingtonians, he joined the RAF Voluntary, Volunteer Reserve, dying in Egypt in April 1941, still aged only 20. These two were among the youngest men from the town to give their lives. The majority of those who died were in their 20s, although plenty were older. Edward Ashley of 49 Wick Road had retired from the Royal Navy in 1935, but rejoined as a petty officer on HMS Forfar and died on the 2nd of, November, 2nd of December 1940 at the age of 43, when his ship was torpedoed west of Ireland. Teddington men died at Dunkirk in the Italian campaign during the Normandy landings in North Africa, Singapore and Burma. Private Edmund Richmond of the Royal Army Ordnance Corps had lived with his wife Edith at 117 Church Road but died as a Japanese prisoner of war in 1944, aged 27. John Cantle of 12 Trolock Avenue was a 19-year-old cadet, 19-year-old cadet pilot, killed while training in South Africa, only a month before the end of the war in Egypt. 
the one servicewoman from Teddington we know to have been lost, Vera Divi, a section leader with the ATS, died closer to home in Kent. Of course, one of the big differences between the First and Second World Wars was the civilian loss of life. Teddington was a target due to the presence of the Royal Physical Laboratory and also the American base in Bushy Park. It suffered bombing raids from September 1940 onwards, with the worst being in November 1940 and the summer of 1944. On the other side of the road to our memorial is Teddington Methodist Church. The current building replaces the Victorian church, which was destroyed by a V1 rocket attack in August 1944. Luckily, the hospital opposite was unharmed. Four years earlier, on the 29th of November 1940, the Baptist church had also been destroyed, as Teddington suffered its worst night of bombing of the entire war. On this night, 44 civilians died, all of them in Church Road, Shacklegate Lane or Railway Road, apart from those who were killed in a direct hit of the air raid shelter in the NPL grounds. Poignantly, among those killed in the NPL shelter were the wife and young sons of Mr Rumble, one of the air raid wardens who was on duty all that night fighting fires and ushering people to safety. Michael and Malcolm Rumble were just 12 and 6 years old respectively when they died with their mother Annie. Their father, frantically busy with his warden's duties, didn't find out until the morning that his own family were among the dead. The bombing of 29th of November killed servicemen as well as civilians. 24-year-old driver Arthur Hartland and Lance Corporal Cyril Leban of the Royal Engineers Bomb Disposal Unit were both killed several days later, defusing an unexploded bomb in Bushy Park. They are both buried in Teddington Cemetery in Shacklegate Lane. I hope these local, personal and poignant stories help us to reflect today as we honour those who have fought for our freedom, as we remember the horrors that war brings to ordinary people, and as we pledge to make our world a place of peace, justice and harmony.
we meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. As we remember those who fought and those who remained anxiously at home in this community, let us pray that God will heal all memories, speak a word of peace and bring us his healing. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Seeing the crowds, he went up onto the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Praise be to God.
Sage! Oh! Let us remember before God and commend to his shore-keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. They should grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we give our today.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations, especially in this time of pandemic, that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that we may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that all their trials, in them they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves today to live as good neighbours, to honour the past, to care for all who are in need, and to live at peace among ourselves and with all people. Lord God, Father of all, we pledge ourselves to serve you and this neighbourhood, to bring relief to all who are in need and comfort to the sad, lonely and distressed. Keep us ever mindful of the struggles and achievements of former generations and of this place where we make our home now and in the days to come. Amen. Strengthen our hearts and hands and minds, O Lord, to work together for peace, to see you in one another, and to seek your kingdom above all things, that your will may be seen to be done, and your kingdom come, through Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Grant to the living grace, the departed rest, the church 
the Queen, the Commonwealth and all the world, peace and concord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.